What's up, everyone? It's Brian McDonough with State of Soccer TV, and we have a special show for you today. As you all know, just recently, the World Cup groups were drawn. The groups are out. And today, I'm joined alongside by Josh Sperber, our resident play-by-play -play broadcaster, to go through each group. And we'll talk about the players, the matchups, and ultimately who we think will advance. Josh, how are you feeling today? Pretty good. It's an exciting time in soccer and just sports. The World Cup is one of the biggest events on the global stage, and it really brings soccer to the forefront of the entire world, just uniting everyone in watching this beautiful game. And I am very excited to start previewing this with you, Brian. That's exactly right, Josh. And what I want you all to do right before we start with Group A is if you have a team in today's World Cup, if you are supporting a team, then hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe. And Josh, with that, let's get started and let's kick it off with Group A. Well, Group A obviously begins with the host. It is a pretty balanced group, but I think it seems pretty top heavy in terms of Senegal and the Netherlands, two teams that have had a resurgence in their soccer prowess. But um, Qatar is looking to make some noise as they host their first World Cup. Yeah, Josh, I'd agree. Uh, one thing I want to mention is that Qatar is very much in a way underrated. The majority of these players play in the domestic Qatari Stars League. They all play together, the majority of them do, and they've been playing together for years. So Qatar has been prepping for this tournament, as we know, for just about a decade now. So expect them to do some big things. Josh, I don't necessarily see them advancing past the likes of a Senegal or Netherlands. What do you think? And it's, it's certainly a fast team and speed kills in just about every sport and none more than soccer, I believe. But it, it is going to be difficult with Senegal and the Netherlands up top. The Netherlands, with one of the deepest teams in this World Cup, they are one of my favorites to go very far. And that starts with their strong center back partnership of Virgil van Dijk and Matthias de Litt. That's exactly right. And one thing I want to touch upon is Senegal, African Cup of Nations champions, um, an extremely deep team coached by Cisse, who is a legendary coach for Senegal. They very well likely, I think, Josh, with Netherlands will advance with the Netherlands, the Dutch at the top of the group. I think you, if you look at Group A, I think the reverse order of where those are sitting right now is going to be how it plays out. Netherlands, I think, should want to run away with this group pretty easily. I think Senegal will give them a fight, though, with Sadio Mane up front and a great combination behind him of Ed Mendy and Kalidou Koulibaly, Napoli's captain, mm -hmm. who is captain Senegal as well will finish in second. Ecuador, still kind of a wild card in this group. They do have some World Cup experience, finished third in their group in the last in the la their last World Cup in 2014, led by the striker Enner Valencia, one of the leading scorers in Ecuadorian soccer history, will finish third. But I do think Qatar can put up a fight at the host. It's just a very difficult group to start off this World Cup numerically. I, I completely agree. Would it be fair to say that Senegal could be, if you even want to consider them, the dark horse of this tournament? I think that is... That's a good, I think that's a good statement. Senegal overcame a difficult Egypt team, keeping international mm -hmm. superstar Mo Salah out of the World Cup. But Senegal, it has a lot of talent. And we mentioned some of the key players on that team, but it, it's going to be difficult for them to beat the Netherlands. But I think they can certainly surprise some teams, maybe even win a game in the knockout stage. So is it fair to say, Josh, in the order, Netherlands first in the group, Senegal second. I'm going to go with Qatar third, and then Ecuador rounding out fourth place in the group. I think the I, I, Ecuador and Qatar, I think, could flip-flop easily. Ecuador mm -hmm. has the experience, but of course, Qatar does have the fans behind them. And I think they will be cheering quite loud for their home country in their first World Cup. And for any CONCACAF viewers or those who are subscribed to State of Soccer, you know that Qatar also played in the last edition of the Gold Cup. So a familiar foe to the United States men's national team as well as other uh, CONCACAF teams. Now, Josh, let's move over to Group B here and preview this exciting group. Well, this exciting group for a lot of the CONCACAF viewers, exciting because it features the United States coming off of a solid CONCACAF tournament. They did have some injuries, but with everything going right, they could have a full team with Weston McKinney back in the lineup by November. He should be able to return. Gio Reyna will be fully healthy as well. But the United States faces a tough challenge at the top of that group in their familiar rivals in England. And one thing I want to preface as we go through, Josh, this entire, you know, group A through group H 
is that we don't really know what the final rosters are going to be, but what we're touching upon is some of the larger names, the stars, with each team. So the final 23s, of course, will be announced in the fall. But you're exactly right, Josh. I think right now, you know, USA, difficult result, you know, against and a disappointing result against Costa Rica in their most recent 2-0 loss. But as long as Serginho Dest is healthy, Weston McKenney, um, you know, Giovanni Reni, Christian Pulisic, and, you know, all the other supporting cast of talent, I think they could very likely move through. But the big story is the matchup with England and England in general. What do you think of that team, the three lines? It's always it's always an exciting rivalry, and I'd be remiss not to bring up what happened the last time these two faced each other in a World Cup. Back in 2010, England leading one nothing. Clint Dempsey sends a slow roller towards the keeper, Robbie Green, and he famously did not hang on to the ball. United States surprisingly earning back a point against England, and that ended up giving them a crucial point in a group that they ended up winning. That's exactly right. And if we go back to 1950, of course, this, these two teams have played each other twice in World Cup play. 1950 in what is arguably considered the greatest upset in World Cup history. The U.S. defeated England 1-0 with a supporting cast of, I believe their, their captain at the time was an elementary teacher in Pennsylvania. Um, he, was, he was the captain of that U.S. team in 1950. So they've gotten two results. Let's see if they get a third in this year's edition of the World Cup. Josh, Iran. Thoughts on this team, the AFC champion? Iran, another team that has experienced kind of a renaissance in soccer. Not a historically great soccer nation, but they do have some World Cup experience. And they are led by one of the most underrated strikers, I think, in this entire draw in Mehdi Tarimi. Plays for the Portuguese giant FC Porto. He is the only player with double-digit goals and double assists and has contributed more to more goals than anyone in that league. His 14 goals are third in La Liga Portugal, and his 11 assists are second. And I think Iran's chances really begin and end with how good he can be mm -hmm. in this World Cup. But it is a tall order, as even the playoff under Iran is featuring a lot of talent with Ukraine, Scotland, and Wales, of course, led by the Real Madrid winger, Gareth Bale. One thing I want to say about Iran is that they've been quite successful in the AFC Confederation for years now. There's multiple, you know, they were in the last World Cup, consecutive World Cup appearances. Additionally, they have never advanced past group stage, but in the last two World Cups, they came very close. And what eliminated them was ultimately wonder strikes in both in both games that ultimately eliminated Iran. So definitely a tough opponent for this group. Josh, Ukraine, Scotland, Wales. We know Wales is advancing in the final of that playoff. Now it's between Ukraine and Scotland. Who do you think initially advances Ukraine and Scotland? I think Ukraine is a, is a deceptively deep team. Mm -hmm. Another team that may not be in a golden generation. There is some good soccer history in that country, but they have a lot of top talent in some of the top leagues. They have February's player of the month for Syria A in Ruslan Malinovsky, a good mm -hmm. guy who can play in the midfield and in the attack. One of the better players in the Premier League this season in Yarmolenko as well. So they have a solid midfield and attack. And a lot of guys from Shakhtar Donetsk, the premier team in Ukraine, will be featuring on this side as well. I just think they're going to be too deep for Scotland. Additionally, Zinchenko, of course, of Man City is also on that team. Um, I think ultimately they, they could make a run especially with the global atmosphere right now, everyone having their back, um, you know, so all the support there. But let's let's talk about, you know, Wales or Ukraine, who advances and, and plays, you know, in this, in this group. I'm going to be rooting for Ukraine. I can, I can confidently say that. But I think that with Wales, it could be biased because I am a Real Madrid fan. But get something that I've seen from Gareth Bale is in big moments, mm -hmm. he makes things happen. And when you have a player like that who can break the game open with one big run, with one big free kick, as we saw during the qualifiers, that is hard to beat. And I think Gareth Bale is going to come up big against Ukraine and ultimately push his Welsh side, Welsh side back into the World Cup. I'm going to counter that, Josh. I personally think Ukraine will advance, but that'll be seen. Um, looking forward to that match between Scotland and then ultimately that, that final against Wales. So we'll see how that group plays up. Josh, why don't you lead us off Group C? Well, we talked about the battle between depth and star power between that playoff in Ukraine and Wales, and that is a very similar conversation, I think, for second place in Group C. It's going to be difficult for anyone to take down Argentina, unbeaten in their last 24 matches internationally, of course, led by Lionel Messi, one of the all-time greats in what could be his final World Cup 
But that second spot between Mexico and Poland could get very interesting. What do you find interesting about that second spot? I know you're a big fan of Lewandowski, but what else intrigues you? I mean, it's it's difficult to to not be a fan of Lewandowski. He was robbed of a Ballon d'Or by COVID, I believe, because he had just an incredible mm-hmm. season mm-hmm. back in 2020. And Mexico is a very solid team. They have depth at every level, really, of their side. And, of course, Memo Ochoa in goal has made some of the most memorable World Cup saves. And I think that could be one of the more interesting matchups of this group stage. There's a lot of young players, too, being featured here, especially for Mexico. One is Alvarez, the number six, who I think will potentially step up in that central defensive role. One of the more talented players in CONCACAF. Have to agree with Guillermo Ochoa, of course, in the net. Um, but I still do believe, like like we're kind of alluding to right now, Argentina and Poland. Uh, I personally think Argentina will top the group with Poland second. I Again, I, I agree with you. I really don't think that that anyone – in Group C, and maybe even in this entire draw, can take Argentina. They just have so much talent. That offense with Paulo Dybala, Angel Di Maria, and of course Lionel Messi looks pretty much unstoppable. But I think Poland, it's really their number second spot to lose. And a big part of that is because of Lewandowski, one of the best out and out strikers in the entire world. And if he has a, another great World Cup, continuing the sensational run of play that he's been on. I think Poland is the team that advances and leaves Mexico out of the, the knockout stage. And of course, Poland also has Zelensky of, of uh, Napoli and other players. And, you know, I, Saudi Arabia, it's, it's a team that I think arguably could be the weakest team in this entire World Cup. Would you, would you agree? I don't know about the entire World Cup. I think they're a couple of solid players, but they're they're just in a difficult draw. Oh, they're, they're facing teams all with some good mm-hmm. star power, all with some guys that have played in the World Cup before, and I think it's just too tough of a draw for them in Group C. But I think that Lewandowski is going to have a great knockout stage and will lead Poland – or sorry, a great group stage and will lead Poland into the knockout rounds. All right, Josh. Now let's move on to Group D. Why don't you kick us off? And another playoff there. And this is a kind of interesting group. And anything is when you feature the defending champions. France led, of course, by Kylian Mbappe, Antoine Griezmann, Paul Pogba, just one of the many names you can just list off with just probably the deepest team in the entire World Cup once again. Mm -hmm. They do have a chance to repeat. And I think they're going to breeze through this group. But there is a lot of potential for who can go in that second spot. I think this is one of the most wide open groups for that second place in the knockout stage after France, because there's some good talent from Tunisia, Peru, who I believe is going to win that playoff. And of course, Denmark led by Christian Eriksen, who had one of the best stories of the qualifying rounds. Most likely will be Australia versus Peru. I agree with you, Peru winning that playoff there to secure a spot in group D. The team that I want to highlight is Tunisia a team that has featured in the last World Cup. It was the first African nation to actually win a World Cup match, Um, a team that can very well be overlooked but have a lot of European talent playing at big clubs. So, uh, you know, a team that I think could get a result against the likes of a Denmark. Um, I think, you know, ultimately France, they'd be overmatched and could potentially push for a result against an Australia or a Peru. I would honestly be surprised if France drops a point in this group. And that Mm -hmm. is nothing to the the talent of some of these teams. I think it's going to be France and Denmark, Denmark, another team with world cup experience. They have a strong center back partnership with Simone care, and they have another defender who is playing in the premier league as well in their center backs. They there's just a lot of talent on this Denmark team. Yusef, Yusef Poulsen as well, who featured for the, uh, uh, the, the Red Bull Leipzig squad in Germany, part of their sensational Champions League run a couple of years ago, and he had a great World Cup in 2018. So I think it's really Denmark's spot to lose, but a lot of just unknown factors could prevent them from advancing. I agree. And, of course, now we've seen the resurgence of Christian Eriksen, which is amazing. And, you know, of course, he's playing, I, I believe, for Brentford now, and he's, he's playing quite well, um, just scoring in today's match. No, in the Premier League now, and he's returned twice now to score at the international level, at the Premier League level. What type of role do you think he'll play come November? 
I mean, again, it's just it's just more time for him to heal. There is so much mm -hmm. that can happen between now in the beginning of April when we're shooting this video and in November when the World Cup will start. But I, I don't think there's been a better story in this entire process than yeah. Christian Eriksen subbed on in his first match since his catastrophic cardiac arrest back in 2021. And within five minutes of getting on the pitch, he puts the ball in the back of the net again. You just love to see that. It makes you want to root for this Denmark team. And they're my pick to advance second behind France in Group D. All right. So let's take a pause there, Josh. I want to say, once again, for anyone who has a team in this World Cup, make sure to subscribe. Even if you don't and you're just a fan of the beautiful game, subscribe to State of Soccer and please hit the like button. Now let's recap real quick. Group A through Group D the teams that we are advancing for anyone who's skipping around this video. Uh, and Josh, correct me if I'm wrong. Netherlands at the top of Group A, followed by Senegal, Group B. We're going to have England advance in first with the U.S. in second, Group C. Argentina topping the group with Poland in second. And Group D, France topping the group with Denmark in second. I think that's a fair assessment. I think it. there's certainly a lot of talent in these first half of the groups as we continue down the alphabet here for the Qatar draw for the World Cup that will start in, right around Thanksgiving in November. And Group E features two of the biggest giants, two of the last three champions mm -hmm. in the World Cup, Spain and Germany. And I think this is one of the most open and shut groups. Spain and Germany, I think, should dominate this Group E. I would, I would agree. Um, you know, uh, Japan's somewhat of a wild card. Uh, the majority of Japan's players play in the des domestic J1 league. Uh, so I, th I think we'll see Spain, Germany advance. New Zealand, Costa Rica. Costa Rica coming off of a win against the United States, 2-0. Uh, the back half of the World Cup qualifiers here in CONCACAF, Costa Rica did very, very well. And, of course, played in the last World Cup in 2018. But I don't see them getting past the likes of a, of a Spain, Germany, or even a Japan, Josh. What do you think of that New Zealand-Costa Rica matchup? Who do you believe will advance? I mean, I think, it, I think it's going to be Costa Rica. They really mm -hmm. finished off the qualifications on a high note, picking up a couple of points. Their defense looks as strong as I've seen it. It, it could be. Another chance for Kaylor Navas to become the World Cup darling. That big 2014 World Cup performance he had earned him a spot on Real Madrid. He now plays behind John Luigi Donnarumma in Paris Saint-Germain. And really one of the best goalkeepers in the world. I think he'll get a chance at another World Cup. But really, Group B comes down to that matchup between Spain and Germany. And that, I think, is going to dictate who will advance. One thing we talk about is the young player of the tournament award, Josh. And I'm looking at these these teams right now. Spain, of course, having Pedri and Gavi. Do you see any anyone else emerging from Spain, or do you think one of those players could potentially win that award? I mean, it, it really could be either of them. Each player kind of liken themselves to the famous Spanish and FC Barcelona duo of Andres Iniesta and mm -hmm. Xavi Hernandez, now the coach of Barcelona. So and they play very similar style of soccer to them. That midfield partnership was crucial in that 2010 World Cup victory. And it really is the youth of Spain leading the charge. More strength in the midfield with Danny Olmo, the Red Bull, the Red Bull Leipzig standout. Marco Asensio, the Real Madrid star, coming off of the wing. There is so much talent on that Spanish team. And it is all so young. Germany still a couple of years removed from that 2014 World yeah. Cup victory. And a lot of the talent is still going to be there and could even be improved upon. You, pre you replace a Jerome Boateng with Nicolas Sule, a star on Bayern Munich as well. Manuel Neuer is still at the top of his game in the net, and they have Marc-Andre Ter Stegen right behind him. A lot of depth on that Germany team, but Spain just passes the ball so well. I think they're going to be tough to beat. Are you saying Spain's going to top the group in Group B? I think so. I, I, they, they might egg out like a one-goal victory against Germany or even draw, but I think Spain just has a lot more youth and I don't think a team in this World Cup passes the ball better than the Spaniards. I think they're going to top Group B with Germany finishing in a narrow second place. All right, we'll book it there. Book Spain to the next round. And let's move on to Group F here in the exciting group. This might be the group of death. It's one of these next two groups that we're going to talk about that are just so deep from top to bottom. One of my favorites, the Belgian Red Devils, I think, will have a solid handle on it. But again, a, just a wide open second spot with an older, more experienced team in Croatia, the runners up 
in 2018 and a lot of question marks on the Canada and Morocco roster as who can really stand out. And I think Canada has one of the potential breakout stars of this tournament in Kyle Lahren. There's multiple power index floating around, Josh, and they say that Group F is the group of death. So I think you're exactly right with that. One thing I want to say is Croatia, aging team, and you said it best, Josh, when we were talking prior to this, to this video here. You, you agree with me, potentially, that Croatia could finish last in this group. They could. I mean, it's just that there's there. I think there might just be too much talent on Canada. Canada and Croatia mm -hmm. are really the opposite ends of the spectrum. This is Canada's first World Cup since 1986. A lot of young talent versus an old and experienced team. And that age is still good. Ivan Rakitic still features for Sevilla. Of course, Luka Modric, the number 10, one of the vice captains for Real Madrid. He is still playing at the top of his game, but there might just be too much speed on the Canadian and Morocco squad. But Morocco did have some internal issues, leaving their biggest soccer star possibly ever off of their team, leading mm -hmm. to the retirement from international football of Hakim Ziyech. That's exactly right. All right, so Belgium, we'll, we'll talk about them. I mean, this is their golden generation. This could be their last chance to to make a run here. And, of course, they've been successful in the last couple World Cups. You know, um, What do you think of Belgium? I believe they'll top the group, and why? Because, I mean, they it's, the still, it's just a lot of depth on that team. Mm -hmm. I still think Thibaut Courtois is one of the best – goalies if not the best in the entire world the golden glove winner in 2018 helping lead belgium to their best ever finish at the world cup finishing in third place and in hazard's injuries always going to be a toss-up but when healthy he has been nothing short of unstoppable for this belgian side and of course romelu lukaku up front yannick carrasco coming off the win as well another deep team and really this is the last chance for that Belgian golden generation. If that group is going to lead themselves to glory, it has to be in Qatar. It has to be in Qatar. So it's safe to say, I think that Belgium will top the group. And then I see John Herbin leading Canada to a second place finish in the group to advance to the round of 16. Would you agree, Josh? I absolutely agree. And I talked a little bit about Kyle Lahren before. You, you may, If you're an mm -hmm. MLS fan, you remember mm -hmm. him as an absolute star, the first overall pick for Orlando City FC back in 2015 in their first year. One of the best scorers for Orlando City FC in their history, 13 goals in this recent run of qualification. And in every World Cup, there is a guy who makes a big move in the ensuing transfer window based on their performance in the World Cup. It was Kaylor Navas and James Rodriguez to Real Madrid back in 2014. Uh, the list just goes on and on. And I think that move could be Kyle Lahren. I think this could be his breakout tournament, 26 years old, playing for Turkish giant Besiktas right now. He is just a guy with a lot of speed and he knows how to get to the goal. Really frustrates teams up front. Part of a great upfront partnership with Jonathan David, who plays in League Un right now. And I think that attack is just going to be too much for the rest of the group. It's a different story if this is 2018 for Croatia or sure. if Ziyech is still playing for Morocco. But I think Canada is going to surprise some people and advance to the knockout stage in their first World Cup in over 40 years. A team that in the CONCACAF region has gotten the credit, of course, finishing first in the group, but a team that very still you know, needs to show on the international stage. I think they will. Um, and of course, you know, the, the players, the cast of players that you just mentioned led by their coach. One weak point of Canada I want to mention is the, is the back line potentially that could be their Achilles heel players like Steven Vittoria, who's, who's getting up there in age featuring in a starting role for Canada. Do you think that will really impact this team against the rest of the group? I don't because the, the center backs might not be as strong as some of the other teams, but they do have a lot Alfonso Davies along the wing. He has really emerged as a leader for Canada. He is starting on Bayern Munich, one of the best teams on the planet. And I think his experience in these big games is going to be a huge help for Canada's back line. And that might that's going to be enough to put them in a second in Group F. All right, so Belgium, Canada, moving on. Belgium first of the group, Canada second. Now let's move on to Group G. Josh, kick us off. Well, this team features the number one ranked team in all of FIFA in Brazil. 
We all know their history in World Cup. Some of the greatest players in soccer history have come out of that side. And this is a big chance for Neymar really reaching the end of his prime, close to his 30s. You know he wants to win. He's come in fourth place in the two World Cups that he's been in, losing that memorable 7-1 defeat to Germany back in mm -hmm. 2014. And I think he's got a good chance to start it in a deep group. But I think Brazil advances easily in that first place spot. The final three teams, Serbia, Switzerland, Cameroon. This is where it gets a little exciting. This group, in my opinion, is, is kind of open, um, especially between Switzerland and Serbia, two somewhat similar teams. What do you see here between those two? I mean, you could even call Group G the group of death. Ratings or not, there is so much talent in this group. The offensive firepower of Serbia reminds me of that run-and-gun Suns team, if you're a basketball yeah. fan, that just – took the NBA by storm in the mid-2000s. Not enough to get themselves a championship, but enough to make things exciting. A whole lot of talent with one of the breakout players of the 2021-2022 campaign, Dusan Vlavic, a chance to make a big name for himself, although he might have a move in the summer. Him and Luka Jovic partnering up front. Philippe Kostic, the winger for Eintracht Frankfurt as well. A whole lot of pace and a whole lot of scoring ability up front for Serbia. And Switzerland is a known entity in these World Cups. That's exactly right. Switzerland, of course, has had success at the global stage. I think they ultimately seem to always outperform uh, you know, what, what's expected of them. And led by Shakiri, who just made the move to MLS. A quick note that I want to make, Josh, because we do have a lot of subscribers from the CONCACAF region. There are multiple MLS players being featured in this tournament, too. So look around on all these squads. Pretty impressive what that league's been able to do as of late. Um, Josh, Serbia, you know, kind of they have the king of the championship, if you want to call it. A player that is the leading goal scorer for Serbia. I believe he has 44 goals internationally. Uh, Mitrovic. Yeah, he is... Just does nothing but find the back of the net for Fulham. He is certainly pushing them back towards the Premier League. Just a triad of really, really top-level strikers on that side. I think it's going to be enough for them to advance, but you can't leave out Switzerland. Always seems to do well. That is where Jordan Shakiri has been so strong in his play. And Cameroon is a dark horse in this group. I think they could surprise people that they are a more defensive minded team. They have one of the best goalies in the world, the starting netminder for Ajax in Andre Onana between the pipes for them. And I think he could really help Cameroon make a name for themselves. Ultimately, I think it's going to be Brazil and Serbia in the top two spots in this group heading to the knockout stages. Before we get to Group H, Josh, one thing I want to talk about is the Golden Glove. Obviously, goalkeepers are so important in the World Cup run. You mentioned some big names here. Who is your early prediction to win the Golden Glove in this tournament? That is that is not an easy question. I mean, <laughs> there's there's so much goal, there's so much goalkeeping talent. Um, I, I do think that the best teams in this World Cup are not as great because of their goalkeepers. Okay. I think that the talent in striking in Argentina and let like Messi leading the charge, their attack is what makes them so strong. It's going to be difficult to say who wins those golden gloves. I think Manuel Neuer, of course, Thibaut Courtois, they're going to make some cases, but it, I, it's really hard to tell. I mean, you're going to think of a guy who's going to advance further into the world cup, who's going to, who's going to take home that prize. Maybe Rui Patricio from Portugal, who I think can make a big run. We're going to okay. talk about them in group H, but it's, it's really difficult to say at this stage, there's so much Amendi for Senegal talent. potentially. He's certainly a guy who could be, who could be in that mix. He's coming off one of the best seasons by a goalkeeper in recent memory, winning the champions league with Chelsea, huge breakout year for him back in 2021. And he is continuing that talent. Andre Onana, another guy that I think is great, but I don't think Cameroon makes it out of those knockout stages enough. I think that the best goalies in this world cup are not on teams that are going to go far enough to get them that golden glove. So it's really difficult to say okay. at this point, but it, yeah, I think it's it's just going to be wide open. There's just there's so much talent in this World Cup, and the stars that were left out were certainly not goalkeepers. Whoever has the hot hand in the moment should should win that award. Now, Josh, Group G, Brazil. It's safe to say we'll top it. Who do you have in second? 
before we move I on. think Serbia's offense is just going to be a bit too much. You know, defense does win championships, but offense gets quick game wins. And that those three strikers that we talked about, mm -hmm. Luka Jovic, Dusan Vlahovic, and of course, Alexander Mitrovic of Fulham, I think that's just going to prove too much for the rest of Group G. But that is going to be one of the tightest finishes, I think, in the entire World Cup in the group stages. As we move on to Group H, reminder to hit the like button, subscribe. Josh, Group H is full of talent. Kick us off here for Group H. And two of the best offensive players in the entire World Cup are in Group H. Of course, Cristiano Ronaldo leading Portugal in what could be his final World Cup. But he is getting up there in age, not having his best season with Manchester mm -hmm. United. And he has a whole lot of midfield talent right behind him. Bruno Fernandes is a guy that has emerged into one of the best midfielders on the planet. Behind him, Sporting Club Portugal's Matthias Nunes, a potential chance to win the young player of the tournament, a solid all-around number eight for that squad. There is so much young talent on this Portugal side, which gives Cristiano Ronaldo a chance to add a World Cup trophy to his mantle. I see them easily topping this group. Exactly. I see Portugal top in the group here. And let's run in, run down to Uruguay. We'll skip over Ghana. We'll go back to Ghana. But Uruguay also has some firepower. Talk about, you know, there are two front strikers. For yeah, Uruguay. more more guys in their last, in their probable last World Cup. Edison Cavani was a star from in the last three World Cups for Uruguay. And mm -hmm. of course, Luis Suarez, not exactly making the headlines for the right reasons in the World Cup sometimes. But all of that aside, he is a fantastic striker, and that one-two punch could be enough for Uruguay to advance, but they're going to face some stiff talent in South Korea, led by one of the best wingers in the world in Hyung Ming Song. One of the best wingers in the world, one of the most global popular icons, of course, in global football, in Son. And Ghana seems to be a little weaker this time around. I know they've had some you know, spectacular teams in the past. Do you think this is one of the weaker Ghana teams we've seen at the World Cup? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're another team that is kind of up there in age. Andre Ayew still leading the charge in the striker position for them. But they, again, there's so much offensive talent in World Cup, in, in group in the World Cup, in this group age particularly, that I think Ghana is going to end up getting left out. And Uruguay and South Korea, I think, is the key matchup in this group because it's going to be difficult for any team in Qatar to beat Portugal. But it really comes out to who has the better day offensively between Luis Suarez and Hyunmin Son in Group H. I think South Korea is going to end up doing it. Son, my okay. big bold prediction, Hyunmin Son is going to have the only hat trick of this knockout stage. And I think that's going to be just enough for South Korea to advance. Interesting. I'm going to differ with you here. I think that Uruguay will advance with Cavani and Suarez. But that will be seen in a really exciting Group H, Josh. So to just kind of go back here and look, Group E, Group F, Group G, Group H, safe to say, Spain will top the group in Group E, followed by Germany, Group F, Belgium will top, followed by Canada, Group G, Brazil will top the group, and second will be Serbia. And to round it out, Group H, Portugal will top the group. You believe South Korea will finish in second. I believe Uruguay will. And that's our World Cup stage preview group stage preview here josh i think it's one of the most equal you know exciting world cups we've seen as far as group a through group h the parody is is quite impressive yeah i mean there's really the only group there's really only two groups that i think are just cut and dry on paper that's group a and group e it's going to be difficult for any of the potential three other teams in group e to take down the 2010 and 2014 World Cup champions in Spain and Germany. And I think Senegal and Netherlands have a stranglehold on Group A as well. Other than that, there are the Giants up top. And then the rest of it is, it could be pretty wide open. So I think it's going to make for a very interesting knockout round in Qatar come November. Come November, it definitely will. And Josh, are way too early. Let's skip over round 16, the quarterfinals, the semifinals, are way too early finals prediction. Who do you think will be the last two teams potentially standing? I'm surprised you with this question, but I just want to see what your thoughts are. I read somewhere that I, I obviously don't know how the brackets get organized just yet, yeah, but exactly. there is a possibility of a Lionel Messi versus Cristiano Ronaldo final. I know that's what everyone wants to see. I know that's what I want to see. I don't know if I can book it just yet, but 
I'm going to say that it's going to come down to Messi versus Cristiano Ronaldo in the final. And I think it's going to be Lionel Messi who wins his second big international trophy, wow. officially cementing his greatest of all time status with a world-class performance and a win in Qatar. I'm going to differ with you, Josh, here at the end. I could definitely see those two match up in the finals, but I'm going to click pick Cristiano Ronaldo in Portugal over Messi and now Ronaldo to cap off his career of course the European Championship and now a World Cup Championship to even further the debate I want to hear everyone's comments below if that is the final who do you think would win and and why and you know who's who's the goal who's the goat and the question's been asked so many times but I want to hear your comments below Josh anything else to add well, you surprised me with the question. I'm going to surprise you with one. <laughs> okay. Who is your dark horse, a big sleeper for you in this World Cup? A big sleeper for me? I, I just think it's Senegal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it once again. Um, I think their coach, Cisse, uh, is is a legend at Senegal. He was a captain of the 2002 World Cup team that made their first ever appearance, African Cup of Nations. He's You, know, you see the passion behind the fan base. Um Ultimately, I see them making a run. I think they're they're very deep top to bottom, playing for some surprising teams in the top five leagues of the world. I don't know if it really is a dark horse because of the talent they have, Josh, but I think oftentimes they can be overlooked. I, I think Senegal will make a run, at least potentially to the quarterfinals, if not, maybe even the sem semifinals. I'm gonna have a I'm gonna look in that same group and in group B as well, two teams that I think might not be dark horses per se. But Netherlands and England, I think this is their best chance mm -hmm. to win a world to win a World Cup with these group. England is one of the most one of the deepest teams, top to bottom, in Qatar. They have a lot of strength at attack with Harry Kane up front, with Raheem Sterling on the wing, John Stones, Jordan Pickford in that back line. So strong for them. But the Netherlands is a really interesting story, and I'm going to tell you why. Danielle Malin is a relatively unknown name in international soccer, a pacey striker who tore up the Dutch league last season, earned himself a move to German giant Borussia Dortmund. As many of you, I'm sure, have heard, Erling Holland is in the talks for a massive, massive move massive. over the summer. Holland mm -hmm. might be the best player on the planet right now. He is incredible. Right behind him in that Dortmund depth chart is Malin. Say Holland makes his big move in June or in July in that summer transfer window. Right next to him, stepping up into that number nine role is going to be Malin. If that happens, if he puts the same kind of pace behind his legs, behind his shot into Germany, he could be one of the emerging stars in Qatar and ready to make his name known on the big stage. And that might be enough to drive the Netherlands deep into this tournament, combining him with Memphis Desai, a seasoned veteran, Frankie de Jong running the show, pulling the strings in the midfield. Netherlands could make a big push in this World Cup. Josh, I'm going to save that as a social clip, archive it, and if it happens, I'm bringing it back up in eight months from now. Guys, this is State of Soccer TV. This is what we do. We talk the global game, and this is our preview of the World Cup. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe. Josh, as always, it's great having you on the channel. Um, really enjoyed it today. Always happy to top, talk soccer with you, my friend. Thanks for having me, Brian. Everyone take care. I'm looking forward to the next eight months leading up to the, to, to the World Cup. And, you know, we'll see what happens.